Hi, and welcome to the second episode of the What If Game Retro part. Um, this is going to be a quite technical discussion today. Uh, it's going to deal with why the Atari ST absolutely sucked at side scrolling, uh, what was done about it uh, in, in pretty much all the games ever released on the platform with the few exceptions that exist, um, how that relates to what demo coders did all the way back in 1989 and onwards, why that wasn't used in many games, uh, and where we went from there, uh, and why Sync decided to create this game engine. So, if you know some of uh, the Atari ST hardware exploitation tricks, um, there's going to be some repetition. Um, am I going to go through everything in an absolute minute detail? Uh, no, uh, I'm not going to do that. This is an, an introduction as to why we did this, uh, why it was created, and also if you come from any other retro platform or you're uh, you know, at all interested in how hardware that was really done cheaply, uh, what can be done with such hardware to create something that, you know, otherwise you would see um, out in the arcades and, uh, and the boards cost a pretty large amount of money. So, to start with, let's talk about the Atari ST, and we can't do that without talking about the Tramel family. After having run Commodore, they decided that 16-bit is where it's at. Uh, so they uh, bought Atari, and then they put the engineers on an absolutely impossible task. Create a Macintosh. Shh, don't tell anybody. It was called the Jackintosh. Create a Macintosh-like computer based on the 68000 processor. Um, a graphical UI, uh, GEM, was decided. Um, some sort of CPM-ish. Uh, DOS-ish uh, environment. Um, it needs to be able to run at a high enough resolution for DTP work. Um, while most people know the Atari SD for its success within music, specifically MIDI, um, DTP was another huge success for Atari due to the high resolution uh, video mode available. Um, and so the engineers created this chipset and ported this operating system in like half a year. It's amazing it even works. Um, it's even more amazing that it was this close to being a completely different machine too, this monster gaming machine. So let's talk about the video modes. They are extremely basic. Now first, if you've used an Atari, um, you know that it has big borders around the usable graphics. Um, any, if you had more time, you would do something about that. You would be able to make them more dynamic. Um, the Atari engineers didn't have that. Uh, also, to be able to get to the high resolution graphics mode, uh, one of the chips um, called the shifter, it basically shifts the bit planes, I'll get to those, uh, out as color values on the RGB port, or in the case of high resolution, on the mono port. Uh, that little chip, a custom chip, runs at 32 megahertz in the ST, designed in 1984, released in 1985. Uh, as you probably know, that's a pretty substantial uh, uh, clock speed right there. And the way that Atari did this uh, were that they made things very similar for the rest of the chipset and then the shifter is the one that basically shifts what it's doing uh, to get to these different graphics modes. So there are three. There's low resolution, 320 by 200, no, not 240, 320 by 200, four bit planes, which means that there's four bits per pixels, 16 colors. There's medium resolution, which is uh, 640 by 200. As you can see, there's a doubling in the horizontal resolution here. Uh, then it's using two bits per bit plane, so you get four colors. And 
if you're doing the math here, it's really complicated, uh, you see that the amount of data sent from the rest of the chipset, or basically read from memory, uh, to the shifter is exactly the same in low and medium resolution. So the shifter is just doing things differently. It's caring about two instead of four bits and increases the clock speed. So in low resolution, the shift registers are running at eight megahertz. In medium resolution, they're running at 16 megahertz. They're outputting pixels twice as, as fast. Now we get the high resolution, and of course it's not 1280 by 200, um, it is 640 by 400. So here, uh, the actual speed of, of H-Sync and other video mode registers and the amount of cycles spent per scan line is, is different. So this video mode is not compatible with regular TVs or, or color screens from the time that were using a 15.7 kilohertz horizontal frequency. So this needed special monitors sold by Atari, um, made by whomever. They're actually pretty close to VGA monitors in spec. So today you can pretty much with certainty connect a VGA monitor to an Atari ST and get high resolution. But anyway, it's 640 by 400. Uh, the shifter is now running at 32 megahertz. It's outputting uh, one pixel, which is one bit, black or white, as fast as possible. And this was an amazing graphics mode at the time. All right, so we know that the ST can switch between these modes. Um, and we know that between the low and med, because sync signals and everything are exactly the same in these modes, and high, where sync signals are different. So, there's another chip in the ST called the glue. The glue is the one that is running a little piece of microcode. So it's basically sitting there saying, if, there is, if I'm at this point in time on a scan line, and the frequency read from a register is this, then do that, which is enable graphics or stop displaying graphics. This is what gives you the borders. Um, start the screen, end the screen, uh, start a blanking signal, end a blanking signal. These checks are done at different locations depending on whether the frequency is 50 Hertz, Europe, 60 Hertz uh, in the US, uh, or mono, which is 71 Hertz. By tricking the glue into missing or adding some output signals depending on what the state of these registers are in the exact point in time it's checking, the ST can enable graphics outside of the borders. Um, and this was realized pretty quickly uh, by Atari ST demo developers. Um, and it's been uh, said that the person who discovered this uh, ability, first of all, Alyssa, was inspired by how similar this is to how things are done on the Commodore 64. And, and now we go back and remember, this is Tremel. Uh, he, he took a bunch of engineers with him from Commodore over the Atari. The Atari ST is the actual successor to the Commodore 64. So it's no surprise that we're seeing some similarities in thinking here. Now, what has this got to do with scrolling? Because the Atari engineers didn't really care about scrolling. I've talked about bit planes. And so the bit planes are, because this is the, the simplest way to then send this memory over from the memory management unit, MMU, over to the shifter. And that's done by sending four words at a time. Um, so the bit planes are 16 pixels in bit plane one, one word followed by 16 pixels, bit plane two, next word, followed by 16 pixels, bit plane three, the next word, up until four bit planes, four words. 16 pixels in 16 colors, and then repeat. So if you want to move something sideways on an Atari ST, well, if you're moving it 16 pixels at a time, yeah, no problem. That makes for a horrible side-scrolling shooting game. Um, and there is nothing there to help you. There is no custom chips, no, no, no anything. 
So either you spend a lot of time, real time shifting, moving the pixels, the bits within the, the registers, within the memory, or you pre-calculate, which is what demo coders prefer to do, so that you have 16 copies of everything, pre-shifted one pixel at a time. So now you can move it smoothly. Uh, you still have to take care when things are near each other. You can't just move, you need to and or, we'll get to that. Um, but, but that's what you did. So side scrolling on the ST is horribly slow. Now, if you're a game developer, you pretty much don't have a choice. Uh, you got the commission. I mean, you need to do this game on the Atari. And I'm gonna go with just, you know, random example. Gianna Sisters, because it's fun. The obvious Mario Bros. clone that got them into uh, trouble with Nintendo. So Gianna Sisters is, if you really dislike everything Mario, and because the gravity is all wrong and whatever. On the Atari ST, this actually is not really a side-scrolling game. You're playing one screen at a time. When you get to the end of the screen, it kind of stops and, you know, moves to the next screen and, and then you play that one. There's been a, a patch to this um, on the Atari STE, the successor computer to the ST that came in 1989, uh, which does have capabilities to do smooth side scrolling. And let's talk about that, this, you know, now and here. Um, the STE is much more capable. Uh, things I'm going to discuss are not needed on STE. However, the Atari had already sold the ST for several years, between 85 and 89. So when the STE came out, um, game developers or publishing houses, you know, are we going to make a game that's only going to be able to sell 40,000 copies or 4,000 copies on the STE? Or the much, much, much bigger ST market? So the STE's capabilities were never used. Yeah. Very seldomly used. Almost never. Anyway, Gianna Sisters. As you hear, that's not a fun game to play. One page at a time. Other games spent uh, maybe one or two full um, screen times worth of CPU time. Uh, just scrolling graphics, doing real time shifting. Uh, maybe because they needed the memory for, for all the sprites and game logic, etc. So they couldn't pre-shift. And then the game was stuttering on the Atari ST. It ran at low FPS frames per second. And this was the reality uh, for ST gamers. Side-scrolling on the ST was horrible. Vertical scrolling is a bit different. So, so let me get to that as well. One way of scrolling, and I'll explain why I'm bringing this up soon, um, is to change where the video pointer is pointing to in memory. So you have a screen up, you have graphics up on the screen. Now if you move the memory pointer one scan line down, it's going to look as if the graphics has scrolled one scan line up. You can't do that on the ST, sorry. Um, because you can only control the video memory address with the high byte and the mid byte. You can't control the low byte. So you need to put the video memory on a boundary of 256. Okay. So I said a line of graphics was 320 pixels, 20 columns of 16 pixels each. Uh, maybe that's simpler because that's going to give us that it's 20 times uh, 4 words, 20 times 8, 160 bytes. So video memory can be set modula 256. One scan line is 160. Let's do the math. When do these line up? 1280. So you sort of can scroll the SD screen vertically by changing the video memory pointer if you do it 8 lines. So an eight line uh, vertical scroller is somewhat easy to do on Atari ST. And this was the state of game developing and what game developers knew and what demo developers knew up until 1989. And I'm not gonna do the full history here. There's, I have another talk about that on my YouTube. I'll link it now. Um, but the realization was that if we do 
going back to the glue chip, if we modify how many bytes the computer is displaying by swapping between these frequencies at the right location, enabling graphics in the left border and the right border, the amount of bytes read changes. This is the same, think about it, this is the same as changing the video memory pointer with a higher granularity than 256. And then, then the first scroll using this only use the, the normal scan line, 160 bytes, enabling the left border, 186, enabling the right border, 204, and enabling both, 230. Now, if you do this, and if I remember correctly, for 17 scan lines, you get enough combinations to mimic having a low byte for the video memory pointer. And now let's remember the horrible ST bit planes. We need one word for one bit plane, plus one word, plus one word, plus one word, that's eight bytes. So actually, a sync scroll, which is the what this is called, uh, it has no relation to my group, sync, even though we were one of the early ones to create sync scrolling. Uh, in Sweden, we call it hardware scrolling. That's why I know it's not us. Um, you can do that eight bytes at a time. Eight bytes is 16 pixels. So the sync scroll gives you the ability to place sort of the video memory pointer at 16 pixel offsets. Awesome. This gives you the ability to side scroll the whole screen 16 pixels at a time. Using a bunch of double buffering, for example, four buffers, you can get this to four pixels, which is a reasonable um, horizontal scroll speed if you want to do something viable. Okay, great. This was the state of the art up until, I think, 1991. And that's where we'll stop this video. The next video is gonna take us from the 16 pixel sync scroll over to the advances that lead to shifter scrolling and getting to four pixels. See you there.